Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank the organizing committee of this mini symposium for inviting me to present our research on patient specific phantoms for interventional medical device validation. I'm Helge Würdemann, Associate Professor of Robotics in the UCL Department of Mechanical Engineering. My team focuses on research in three different domains of medical robotics. First, on abdominal robotic minimally invasive surgery, on cardiovascular interventions, and patient-specific modular or aortic vascular phantoms. Today, I would like to give a short introduction of our research in cardiovascular interventions and then move into the area of patient-specific modular aortic vascular phantoms. In the field of cardiovascular interventions, we focus on transcatheter aortic valve replacement and abdominal aortic aneurysm. At UCL, we have looked into current challenges in the field of transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or short TAVI, and proposed a new intraoperative approach to determine the diameter of the aortic annulus, exploiting intra balloon pressure and volume data acquired from a robotized valvuloplasty balloon catheter. Aortic stenosis is a serious heart valve disease which affects 2% of people who are over 65 years of age. The condition is characterized by a narrowing of the aortic valve opening, usually induced by age-related progression calcifications. If untreated, aortic stenosis is associated with 50% rate of death within two years after the appearance of symptoms. Open heart surgical aortic valve replacement is the traditional procedure used to treat aortic stenosis. However, at least 30% of patients with severe aortic stenosis cannot undergo surgical procedures due to advanced age. Left ventricle dysfunctions or multiple coexisting health conditions. Hence, transcatheter aortic valve implantation, or TAVI, was introduced in 2002 as a minimally invasive alternative to surgical aortic valve replacement. The procedure can be divided into three steps. First, the native valve is dilated using a balloon catheter, which is called valvuloplasty. Then a bioprosthetic valve is inserted through a catheter and implanted within the diseased native valve. And the third step is the correct positioning of the device is assessed. Currently, the prosthetic device selection is essentially based on preoperative size assessment of the aortic annulus through different imaging techniques. That very often leads to suboptimal device selection which results in major complications such as pathetic valve leakages, which is reported in up to 61% of the patients, or interruption of the cardiac electric signal, which depending on the prosthesis type is reported in about 12 to 33% of the cases. But why does that happen and what are the limitations of the current um, approaches? Each imaging modality has its own specific strengths and weaknesses. However, all of them share two main drawbacks. They cannot provide any information about the mechanical properties of the annulus, which might deform differently in every patient. Also, they do not take into account the irregular level of calcification and potential changes in the annular geometry caused by the valvuloplasty procedure, which is the first step of the entire TAVI procedure. As mentioned earlier, we have looked into the development of a valvuloplasty robotic balloon catheter capable of determining the size and the mechanical property of the aortic annulus. That would allow to extract additional information that is relevant about the aortic annulus from a device which is already part of the TAVI procedure, potentially optimizing the device selection. First of all, we developed 
a robotic system that you can see here capable of controlling the balloon inflation and constantly acquiring intra-balloon pressure and volume data. The system is composed of a rapid prototype syringe pump, a controller equipped with a motor shield and an absolute pressure transducer. This robotized inflation device was interfaced with an Edwards non-compliant 23mm balloon catheter. The robotized syringe pump was used to inflate the balloon inside different idealized annular phantoms. These idealized annular phantoms were obtained by machining acrylic plates with different thicknesses. Six different diameters from 18 to 23 millimeter were tested to take into account typical balloon annulus sizing ratios. Two lengths, in this case 15 and 20 millimeter, delimiting reported annular length variability in adult human aortic valves were considered. During each test, the balloon was inflated to an absolute pressure of 4 atmosphere, which is the operating pressure of this catheter, according to the manufacturer's specifications. The additional continuous lines that you can see here in this diagram are the average pressure volume curves obtained for different diameters, but same annular length, 20 mm in this case, and as expected, a clear direct correlation between the position of the departure point from the free inflation curve and the diameter of the phantom can be observed. The dashed lines represent averaged pressure volume curves obtained for a different annular length, 50 mm in this case. From the experimental data we can already observe that if the diameter of the phantom is smaller than the diameter at which the balloon would start stretching if freely inflated, the position of the departure point depends significantly on the annular length. Therefore, it is impossible to obtain a direct unbiased estimate of the annular diameter from simple considerations on pressure volume data. We have looked into different balloon numerical models. As you can see here, some of them have been uh, developed using Mark MSC, where we have not only modeled the deflation, but also the inflation process. We also have been looking into balloon analytical model. And in this case, we have created a model for the free inflation process, which describes the behavior of the balloon in the region where the material starts getting stretched. The balloon was modeled as a pressurized thin-walled vessel with hemispherical ends and therefore a human linear elastic isotropic material and small deformation, it is possible to express the balloon volume and the diameter of the cylindrical part as a function of the transmural pressure. Several parameters, as you can see here, need to be determined to characterize the model. The final step of our work here was the development of the sizing algorithm. The algorithm relies on the described analytical model and an iterative method based on linear regression to identify within the acquired data set the point at which the pressure volume curve deviates from the model. The corresponding pressure values are then used in combination with the analytical model to determine the diameter of the balloon, which is assumed to be equal to the diameter of the phantom at that point. Therefore, sizing is performed indirectly. Furthermore, we have been looking into a modular suturing catheter for the treatment of abdominal aortic aneurysm. Abdominal aortic aneurysm is a disease of the human's main blood vessel that runs from the heart down through the chest and abdominal area. The walls of the aorta become weak, the vessel will bulge, which can get bigger over time and might burst. Of course, again here we have two different treatments, one is open surgery and the other for high-risk patients, a minimally invasive intervention called endovascular repair. In 
Endovascular repair, a guide wire is inserted into the femoral artery of the patient and pushed up the aorta, followed by a catheter that carries is the stent graft. The stent graft is then deployed over the unhealthy tissue of the aortic wall so that the blood flow can go through the stent graft instead of further penetrating the unhealthy tissue of the aortic walls. The stent graft is fixated to the aortic vessel walls using hooks, which you can see in this video. And this is only possible if the patient's aorta has a healthy neck. In a significant number of patients, um, type 1 endoleaks are happening. Hence, the blood flow doesn't go through the stent graft, but the gap between the stent graft and the aortic vessel wall allows the blood to enter the area of the aortic aneurysm, further weakens the tissue and pressurizes this volume and this can lead eventually to rupture. We have been looking into developing a new suturing device for endovascular repair that aims to allow endovascular repair without the use of a stent but only using the graft, a continuous suture pattern to prevent these type 1 endoleaks, semi-automated suturing due to limited imaging feedback and a continuous blood flow during this intervention. Here we have our prototype that we have created that consists of two catheters that can be inserted into both sides of the femoral arteries, which then collaborate within the aorta. So on one side we have the suturing catheter module and the other side the positioning catheter module and they are merging inside the aorta through a electromagnet. So here you can see the detailed drawing of our prototype, which is a larger scale prototype. Um, and you can see that the positioning tool will allow the entire mechanism to have a stable position. The suturing component then hooks onto this positioning component via electromagnet, um, allowing a continuous suturing pattern around the circumference of the aortic wall. This suturing module allows a suturing procedure to have access from one side of the tissue only. In order to validate and test our interventional medical devices, we have been looking into patient-specific modular aortic vascular phantoms that have clinical relevant mechanical properties. The phantom that we have created is shaped according to patient-specific geometry and it's made out of flexible but durable silicon material. The phantom is placed inside a transparent watertight box or housing which allows a direct visualization of the phantom model. Connected to the box is a compliance chamber allowing to reach human-like distensibility. All materials have been chosen to have MR compatibility. The manufacturing process involves many phases. The first phase was the image segmentation starting from patient-specific data. The volume has been divided into four modules. For this specific prototype, we focused our attention on the aortic arch region. The image has been segmented using 3D slicer and open source software for DICOM file editing and visualization. The model has been refined using Mesh Mixer, a CAD open source software. We then have considered a number of different elastic materials for the manufacturing of the Phantom. These have been tested using a stress strain analysis and an FEA simulation to identify the most suitable material for this application. The final step included the manufacturing process. We decided to use Ecoflex 30 and a casting technique 
to fabricate our aortic phantom. The phantom has been connected to a Vivitro system super pump, an FDA approved left heart simulator. A ball valve has been placed at the outlet of the phantom to be used as a systematic resistance. The resistance has been varied obtaining pressure curves with 80, 100 and 120 as mean pressures. This has been done with the phantom at different compliance levels. For a fixed compliance value, the pressure rises with a semi-rigid shift as the systematic resistance increases. For the same mean pressure value, the compliance of the system affects the aortic pulse pressure, which rises for low level of compliance and decreases for high value of compliance. This behavior is also evident in real physiological conditions. However, an undesired behavior is shown for high values of compliance. Another peak appears after the notch. This behavior could be due to the fact that the phantom undergoes a rise in pressure during the diastole due to the movement of a certain amount of water from the housing to the compliance chamber that takes a few milliseconds to drop back in the phantom housing. We also tested the MR compatibility um, thanks to the collaboration with UCLH. It can be clearly seen that our phantom is MR compatible and does not produce any artifacts in the MR image. More detail on our work on medical devices for cardiovascular interventions and patient-specific phantom development can be found in these publications. I'd like to thank again the organizing team of this symposia and I'm happy to answer any questions.